I love my home theater, but as with everything else in life, it is not perfect. Now, when it comes to social media and being online, we always want to present the best version of ourselves and to present this picture perfect image or whatever. But today I'm going to take you around my theater and show you the 10 things that are either wrong with it or I wish I had done differently. So let's get started. So number 10 on the list is the platform. Now this one might be a little surprising given how common platforms are in home theaters. But I kind of wish I didn't have a platform. And, and there's a few reasons for that. First and foremost, the ceiling is not very tall in here. And so this nine, 10 inch platform just puts these seats that much closer to this low ceiling. And so it's not ideal. And I kind of don't like having to step up over the platform, which that seems kind of silly. Um, but I think it would be much better if the room were just open and flat and didn't have this platform. So this is something that is not wrong with the theater because like I say, everybody has a platform, but I wish I didn't. So coming in at number nine, following along the theme of the seats being too close to the ceiling, this issue is the ceiling is too low. Now this base, this is a basement room and it was supposed to be an eight foot ceiling. That's what it showed on the plans that the ceiling would be eight inches from the floor. In reality, with drywall and everything else, it has turned into about seven foot eight, which is not very tall. Um, I wish if I had it to do over again, I would have had the builder make this a true nine foot ceiling. It would have cost a little bit extra, but that is something that I wish I had done. Now, when I told you I wish I had not put in a platform. You may have been thinking to yourself, well, George, how would the second row see over the heads of the first row? Well, that brings me to number eight. And that is, I wish I had done only one row of seating. This is what I wish it looked like. I wish I had these three chairs right here in the middle of the room right on the floor. No couch, no couch at all. Now, when we designed this room, we tried to maximize the most number of seats. We have three rows of seats here. Or, sorry, we have a row of seats here with three seats. We have three seats behind the bar. We have three seats on the couch. We have a seat in the corner. We have two seats on the edge. Maximizing the most number of people that could fit in this theater room was the goal. After having this room finished for the last two and a half years, we have determined that these seats don't get used. 95% <laughs> of the time, I am in here watching a movie by myself. I've given up trying to get the kids to watch movies with me. Sometimes I can get my wife to watch a movie with me. Beyond that, I can count on one hand the number of times we've had enough people in here to fill up all the seating, probably on three fingers. <laughs> it just never happens. And so I wish I had just three seats right here, right in the middle of the room, just perfectly placed on the floor. That would also maximize the height to the ceiling. Uh, that would be amazing. Now, for those rare occasions when we do have more than three people watching a movie, which sometimes we do, I think it'd be really cool to have a couple of those really large bean bags right in the front, just kind of at the feet of these of these recliners. And and then we we could have three people here and then two people in the bean bags, and that would be ideal. The bar is something that is cool in theory. In theory, it's this cool place where you can hang out back here and you can eat food and watch a movie. And that all sounds great until you actually try to maneuver around it because there is a bedroom and a bathroom behind this room and you have to walk either in front of 
the recliner chairs or behind the bar to get back there. And it's kind of awkward and it's not very convenient. Not to mention, watching a movie from behind this bar is not fun. It's not pleasant. It's too far from the screen and it's too close to these rear channel speakers. So the sound back here is not great. Um, and in addition to that, nobody ever uses this. <laughs> the, the only time the bar gets used is uh, if we're having like food down here, we'll set up the food on the bar. But if we just had a single row of, of recliners, we could just set up a table. Like you could, you could just set up a temporary table to hold the food. Like it would be no problem. Um, so yeah, the bar, definitely not worth it. Definitely would not put it in next time. So number six on my list is speaker placement. Currently, my sides are pretty much in line, ear level, with the recliners. But if I had the recliners down here, right here on the floor, I would put the sides right here. So basically in line with the recliners, maybe a few inches forward. And then these are the wides right here. I would place the wides further forward in the room. I would put them closer to the screen. Uh, right now, they're pretty close. The speaker uh, surrounds are pretty close to the wides. You can still hear a distinction, so it's, it's fine with the seats being where they are, but I think if I had it to do all over again, I would do a little bit more separation between the surrounds and the wides and move these a little bit closer to the screen. Number five on my list would be the number of speakers. When I originally designed this theater, I set it up as a 7.2.4 Atmos setup. But after I got everything up and going, I realized I wanted to upgrade and add wides. And so that required 9.2.4, 9 on the bed layer. And so I had to run external wiring and I used um, a cable raceway to hide the wiring. And you know, I, I think it looks all right. It, it looks fine. It would be ideal to have all of the wiring inside the wall, like I originally wired it up, um, but I didn't really foresee what I was eventually going to need. If I had it to do over again, I would wire everything inside the walls and I would wire it up for a 9.2.6. So that would be nine on the bed layer and six Atmos speakers. And on that topic, currently I have bookshelf speakers for my front Atmos speakers and I have in ceiling for my mids. What I would do differently next time is I would do all six as bookshelf. Bookshelf speakers make excellent Atmos speakers because you can put them on articulating mounts and then you can position them perfectly and point them all directly at the main listening position. So coming in at number three, this may be kind of a nitpicky thing, but I kind of wish this door right here, which leads to a bedroom, I wish we had brought this door out to here. And the reason for that is basically for acoustical reasons, because if we had the door here, then we could mount, you know, some sound absorption panels on it, because as it is right now, the sound, this area right here, I think the sound kind of builds up in here, especially the bass. Um, and so I think it would be better to have the room basically be a perfect rectangle instead of having this weird little opening right here. So again, it could be a small thing. Would it make that big of a difference? Probably not. So this one was kind of, kind of iffy, but that's, that's what I would do. I would change that. Okay, number two, the carpet. This is fantastic carpet. It's super plush, it's super nice, it feels great. It's a great color, just not a great color for a movie theater. When you're watching a movie, we have these nice dark walls that are painted in flat paint, and so we get very few reflections, but the carpet kind of stands out 
um, you do get some reflections off of the screen. And so the carpet kind of shines back at you. I think the solution would be to add a dark rug just at the front. Cause where obviously you can't see it back here when you're watching a movie, it's only in the front right in front of the screen. So I think if we put a dark rug down there, that would eliminate all of the reflections, 95% of the reflections, but it's just not really a high priority. It's not that big of a deal, but sometimes I'm watching a movie and it does stand out to me that we have kind of this area that's kind of reflective. And now for my number one thing I would change in my home theater, it's my amplifier setup. Now, when I first designed this theater, I designed it as a 7.2.4. So I had 11 speakers. Now I'm running the Anthem AVM70 processor, which means I need external amplification for every single channel. So I needed an 11 channel amplifier, which is what I got, the Yamaha MXA5200. It's a great amplifier. It puts out about 150 watts per channel, and it does a great job. But when I upgraded the number of speakers in my theater, I needed additional amplification, and I bought a crown amp. And when I connected the crown amp to my side speakers, they came alive. It, they were sounding better than they had ever sounded before. It was incredible. And I have a theory. It's not just the extra wattage from the crown amp, which it does have more watts per channel uh, from the crown amp than the Yamaha. But I think the other difference is just having fewer channels in one chassis fewer channels pulling power from a single power supply. So if I had it to do over again, I would go with more amplifiers, fewer channels per amplifier, rather than trying to get all of my amplification out of one chassis. Thanks for watching.